Welcome people of the World Wide Web. So I'm kind of doing a little bit of a review video. I you know, I've had this thought uh, I've seen the guys on the weekend and I had this to kind of you know, we were speaking about like what were our favourite movies of this year and stuff like this and what we've seen and you know, back and forth. There was one constant in there which I'll get to in a minute or in a little bit, but we'll keep it going. So yeah, so this is basically we are in the seventh month of the year, so we're over half month half of the year down already. Um as you follow the channel, I go to quite a few movies. Um, I'll film this video, I'm at 32, so more than one per week. I'm going to see one tonight, so when this video is released, it'll be 33, but that video will not be counted because obviously it is in the month of July. So from January to June, um, I have seen, as I stated, 32 movies. I've seen Asteroid City, No Hard Feelings, The Flash, Indiana Jones, Transformers. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, The Little Mermaid, Hypnotic, Fast X, Love Again, Guardians 3, uh, Evil Dead Rises, uh, The Three Musketeers, Assassin's Club, Reinfeld, uh, The Super Mario Brothers, Air, Dungeons and Dragons, um, John Wick 4, Sh Shazam Fury of the Gods, Cap uh, Champions 65, Screen 6, uh, Creed 3, um, Demon Slayer, The Swordsmith Arc, Cocaine Bear, Knock at the Cabin, Ant-Man 3, Plane, The Whale, Megan, and A Man Called Otto. So, out of these, and in no particular order, I've chosen what, so far, my 10 favourite movies are. This will go towards a movie at the end of the year, which I'll do my total roundup of what my 10 favourite ones were. Um, I may even do a comparison to what the ones I actually wanted to watch compared to there so I'm going to go through them in the go just highlight the ones I watched in the order I watched them so my very first one and this was the one that came up was A Man Called Otto this was a really good film for people who don't know this is Tom Hanks he is a elderly gentleman he lives in kind of a small um, residential place um, he it lives by himself and he is a very grumpy old man as people view him um, a new couple, a young couple, move in with two young daughters, and it is basically the interaction believe, between Tom Hanks and this family. Uh, there are a lot of other elements to it, and there are a lot of stuff that isn't shown in the trailer, which I really liked, and I'm not going to go into here. I do have a review um, video, so if you want to go back on the channel, I'm sure you could find that, um, and I kind of give away a bit more, but I don't want to. I'm going to try and keep this spoiler-free if I can. So, so a man called I very, very good Tom Hanks, you know, very. it came out of left field, I didn't even really know about this film, I, I'd i seen the trailer, and I say, in 20 minutes into the film, you already began, well, this wasn't in the trailer, but it's very, very good, so that was the first one, uh, or the first one I liked. The second movie that I watched that I really, really liked was Plane, so I know this is a favourite of AJ's, um, so this is Gerard Butler, he is a pilot on a plane going from, I believe, Hong Kong to America somewhere, Hawaii maybe, um, to see his daughter, um, then they had the bloke who played Iron Fist, he is a um, captive, he is, or is a criminal, he's been chained up and he goes with a marshal and they basically use the plane, or hot kind of get on the plane because they need to get him back and the marshal's with him and that's it. Obviously like most things unfortunately they have issues and the plane goes down on an island that is unfortunately done by um, hostels and it's kind of the story of them trying to get off um, Mike Coulter, that's the bloke, and Gerard Butler do work really really well. I say Mike Coulter is more the action hero and Gerard Butler is more the kind of the emotion side of it which is a little bit different to what you normally see of Gerard Butler but I think the two worked really really well. It's a kind of it's kind of a modern day-ish lethal weapon thing I thought was really good at you know if they were buddy cops or something I think that you know a film like that would actually work really well. But yeah this worked really well. It's kind of a, a throwback to the 90s action movies um but yeah, so that that was number two. So the third one I've seen, this was Demon Slayer, um, the Swordsmith villain. Now, I hadn't seen season two, so the movie is a little different. It covers the last few episodes of season two, and then it kind of has a bit of filler towards season three. Um, I really liked it because it really threw it in a different... In, in, it, it twists the story because like most anime stories you have a build up and then you have this big fight this was a really big fight to start off with that lasted the best part of an hour and then you had kind of the follow on which was a nice refreshing change it kind of really amped you up really really quickly and then kind of brought you down and because it then kind of 
sprinkled some like ideas towards story three, which obviously is all out now on I think on Crunchyroll and stuff like that. I'm not sponsored by that, but because it was out, it obviously makes you want more, which I thought was really, a really good thing because I think you don't see. So after doing this, the next one after this, I so moved four that like, four that like, I really four that like, I really liked. Um, was Creed Free. I know a lot of people were over the fence. I mean, it was a very good film with Jonathan Majors, probably one of the last films he may even be in. Um, I really liked um, the direction and obviously how the actor who played Apollo Creed, obviously he directed this. I liked the anime influences. There was a few little bits that I think didn't work, but overall it was quite a solid story. And as a, a final film for the Creed franchise, if that is the way they go, I think it is a nice send-off. So you know, really happy with that. So there was that. So my next one, number five, was the movie 65. Um, again, a lot of people, I, I quite liked the Adam Driver and the kid role. I liked a lot of what they, you know, the, the relationship they were trying to have because of communication barrier and obviously to real world, other, or there's other stuff that was going on with both of them that they kind of had the link to. I would have liked a little, you know, it wasn't the best film in the world, but it was really good with them landing on prehistoric Earth and there being dinosaurs there and having them survive. And I thought it worked really well. I thought the CG worked really well. Um, I do look forward to adding it to my collection. Um, and as I say, it was a, a film that kind of very highlighted at how good an actor Adam Driver was, which I think he's been in a lot of other franchises and stuff, and I think they've not done him justice. So so the next one afterwards this is a film i've actually watched twice and watched it with my was champions so this is woody harrelson he is a, a basketball assistant um unfortunately pushes over his um bus and then gets done for drunk driving and as the courts basically um basically say you can go to jail or he can help what is called the friends which is a a selection of kids who have um, conditions between Down syndrome and stuff like this and it's basically him as Volvin as a character and le you know he has a lot of issues which is why he gets angry and pushes over his coach and him kind of genning with these kids um, or, ad or adults of different conditions and stuff like this. It's a very very beautiful film there's nothing like this out there and to display um, people with these different conditions who or most of the actors and actresses in it are, do have certain conditions and stuff but they all work really really well with the story is good the acting is good and everything works well so champions is on this that's number six number seven is air so this is matt damon obviously he works for nike and this is them getting air jordans um up up on kind of a pedestal and him you know through the struggles obviously it's directed by his friend uh, Ben Affleck who stars in it very shortly and it just I say I'm not the biggest fan of shoes I think I said this on the review but when you were watching it you know it is a really kind of feel-good film it has a bit of highs and lows that you don't expect and a few little twists and turns because you kind of know where it's going but the journey that they go and what's done and then you get to see a few links and, and so I, I I'd be the first one to say like somebody doing a movie about shoes would not be a you know somebody who's not really into shoes or sports big time would be into it but i actually really really like the film i think it's very very good and then the next one we have after it is this number eight so this is the super mario brothers love this animated movie it pays so much homage to the original there are loads of little bits that you've missed i look forward to watching it again and again because of finding lots of it the animation worked well the voice acting worked well the story was good and it's exactly what you wanted from a computer game to like a to animated movie in my eyes um, i know not everybody agrees but i thought it was really good um, then we have the final two movies um so number nine is The Three Musketeers. So this is the first of two movies based on the Musketeers story. It is um, D'Artagnan is the first one and The Lady of the Winter is the second one which should be released later this year. Really, really good film. Very plain, rustic, very going back to the old age of, you know, the scenery, the settings. The actors are all really good. Yes, it is French and it is subtitled, but that doesn't... But, you know, I... But I loved how they portrayed it i really really look forward to the second one i look forward to owning both of the both of d'artagnan and the lady the winter movies i think yeah i love the musketeers but i think this is a very good film um yeah uh one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah that's number nine and then the final one on here which was a little while ago i haven't seen anything great was guardians of the galaxy three 
Um, James Gunn, brilliant send off to the franchise. What he did, you know, it isn't necessarily a perfect ending, but how he brings other actors and actresses in and the story and how he how he evolves it. To me, I say it was it was a gem of a Marvel movie, which it's been a long time since we've had one of these. To me, it put that trilogy probably close to, if not the top of the best trilogy that Marvel have released. Consistency wise, I mean, two I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I mean, they are really good. The fact it's a lot of unknown characters before the first film and we've gone on to love them and see how they've grown. Um, it was just brilliant. So yeah, so that is my 10 movies that I've enjoyed so far. You know, definitely recommend if you watch this video, a lot of them are probably out on streaming, on DVD, physical media. Please do help, obviously, the community in that. If you can, buy it, pick it up secondhand, whatever. If you're getting the copies out there and people are watching it, you know, that is always a good thing for us physical media collectors um, or even movie watchers if you stream it. Otherwise, I've been Cypher Sigma. Do the usual stuff as you can. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.